For an entire century, Ensite has succeeded as a legendary player in the communications industry, while never losing sight of how it all began. From humble beginnings in small town Pulaski to the exciting growth of today, Ensite's success is the result of the hard work and forward thinking of a company committed to making life better, inspiring progress, and building not only a flourishing business, but flourishing communities. A company committed to the true heart of communication, people. Nineteen ten was a big year in this in Pulaski. It was the time that the Pulaski State Bank was founded. It was the time that the um, the village was founded. Uh, it was the time that the phone company was founded. It was also the time that Alexander Graham Bell's telephone patent ran out, making the industry wide open. A group of enterprising Pulaski residents got together at the local drugstore and formed the Pulaski Merchants and Farmers Telephone Company. They knew that telecommunications would be a real key to growth of any communities. So you saw a lot of telephone companies starting around that same time. When Daniel Reardon and his wife Florence moved to Pulaski, they saw a great opportunity. They were entrepreneurial in nature, both grandmother and grandfather. And um, they had heard that there was an opportunity to get into Pulaski to get involved in both the power company and the telephone company. They found that the telephone company was a little easier to get the stock and they ended up buying controlling interest in the in the phone company. They needed a business office, they needed a place to live, and they needed to have the ability to have operators work overnight because the phones had to be answered 24 hours a day. So they found this building and uh, turned it into the phone company at that time. In the 20s, people didn't think they needed phones yet. A lot of people said, if I need to talk to somebody, I'll wait until Friday when I go into town or Saturday when I'm at the mill. There wasn't enough money to really even uh, take care of um, Dan and Florence. Dan actually uh, was a salesman. He would go out and sell for the telephone company to try to get lines put in. But he also took time off to go up to northern Michigan to sell to the lumberjack camps. Along with the entire nation, they would soon face a challenge that no one was prepared for, the Great Depression. Uh, during that time, sometimes people would, would barter. They would actually bring in eggs, they would bring in um, vegetables and that to pay the bill. And a number of customers dropped off. As a matter of fact, one of the things that w I remember very, uh, very dramatically was my dad telling me about the fact that uh, his dad had said that if the number of customers ever dropped below 300, they'd have to sell the company. Now, fortunately for us, uh, they held on. In the following decade, the world's focus shifted as war spread throughout Europe and then the Pacific. Like in every small middle American town, life in Pulaski went on, but support for the troops was ever present, and interest in the telephone grew. Before World War II, people didn't think they needed a phone. But when the young men went over and fought in Europe and they, they realized there was a bigger world than just the farm that they worked on or just the business they were involved in, they realized there was more and they wanted phone service. So there was a big rush after the World War II for people saying, we need to stay connected. We need to be able to be involved. We need phone service. In 1952, Daniel and Florence's son, Robert E. Reardon, was named president. Throughout the 50s, the switchboard operator continued to play a key role in phone service. You'd say, number please, number please. Everything was manual then. There was no dial. And probably 400 subscribers at the first, when I first started. And it wasn't long and you just learned everything that was uh, Every, every number. I was young and it was easier to remember things then. The company gained its 1,000th customer in 1956, but by 1960, 
the next evolution in the telephone industry had hit its stride, dial technology. And with it came the automatic switch system and the end of the line for the switchboard girls. In 1968, Northeast Telephone Company was born. Robert E. was 24 hours a day Northeast Telephone. When I first started, he would come over to my place on a Sunday, pick me up, and we would go ride the lines where to look for broken poles, to uh, see if any wire needed replacing, or if there was an install, what needed to be done for the next day. Sometimes I missed the Packer game. What are you going to do? I started June 3rd, 1968. Back then, there was iron wire. So I was maintaining the lines and installing phones. I did everything back then. Today's world is more mental. Everything's electronic. Years ago, everything was physical, handling these poles and putting it all up. Then in the middle of winter, big snowstorms would come, blow the whole, all the lines down. You have to we use pipe poles, what we call to prop, prop them up, just to get people service. The third generation of Reardon's joined the company as it lay on the brink of new and exciting opportunities that would take it for the first time beyond the telephone. I still remember uh, our dad telling me, he said, you're not in the telephone business. Uh, and that was kind of surprising because I really thought we were in the telephone business and he said he said dad if we're not in the telephone business what business are we in he said you're in the service business and he said always put your customers first it opened our eyes to saying well how can we service our customers better as Rob had said then we then it was easier to look at going into the cable business in 1982 the holding company Northeast Communications of Wisconsin was formed allowing the company to operate more freely Soon after, the subsidiary Net Cable was launched and began providing cable television service to Pulaski. But their biggest endeavor was yet to come. The big thing came along. It was about 82, 83 when cell phones were licensed finally. They had been invented and made practical a dozen years before that, but the government took 12 years to finally you know, prove them. Things really started rolling along after that. I remember Pat coming to a meeting and, and talking to us and saying, you know, we're going to get into this new business, this cellular telephone business, and I, I'm going to be busy with starting this up for a little bit. And it's going to take me a little bit of time, and, but don't worry, you know, we'll get that set up and then things will be back to normal here at Northeast Telephone Company. It never really got back to normal. It just kept growing and expanding, and, and, um, uh, w which was great. In 1986, the FCC determined that one license in each market would go to a landline phone company already providing service there. The FCC encouraged all of the area landline companies to work together and come to an agreement. So what Pat and Rob did is they got the whole state of Wisconsin together, all the phone companies in the state, and really worked on a settlement for the full state of Wisconsin. And they decided that we being the smallest company, maybe we had the least vested interest and we decided they decided that we should actually run the meetings so I chaired the meetings and ran and Rob ran the numbers and that's how we kind of got going in this while the FCC license process was a success securing enough capital to launch the new venture took a bit more convincing when we went to the banks and explained that we needed money for this new product called Cellular, they didn't really jump up and down. Uh, matter of fact, they said, you know, we don't think we can lend you any money for this. This product isn't going to go anyplace. We finally found someone that as long as we signed our life away and uh, made all kinds of promises and took personal responsibility for this, they uh, eventually loaned us some money. The first cellular phones were not the compact mobile devices we think of today, but they were, in fact, mobile. And we had these huge bag phones that you would feel foolish trying to carry around, so we had car phones. And sales were not real rapid, but they were coming. The first cost of that first car phone was $3,000. Within six months, that first phone, the the price had dropped in half, so we were selling phones now for $1,500. 
and a few more sales came. And at that time, I had my salesperson come into me at my office, and he said, Pat, I just sold our 500th cell phone. And I said, Tim, that's great. That, that's, that's really a milestone. And he looked at me and he said, so what do you want me to do now? And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, sold, we sold 500 cell phones in Brown County. He said, you really don't think Brown County can handle more than 500 cell phones, do you? And I looked, geez, I sure hope so. Go out and sell 501. Soon the need to expand geographically became clear. We ended up being the first ones in the state of Wisconsin to turn up a rural cell site, and it happened to be in Sturgeon Bay. Success in Sturgeon Bay led to expansion in other adjoining counties and communities. Cellcom was on its way to becoming a leader in regional cellular communications. And once again, it was on to a new venture. First of all, at that time, nobody really knew what the Internet was. It existed since the 60s, but it was a government type of activity. Our public relations person uh, was over at Pulaski High School and was meeting with the school, and they said, well, we'd like to get the Internet. When we actually rolled out the service, my, one of my techs came to me and said, um, say, you got to check this thing out. It's, it's called the World Wide Web. Uh, and the browser, it was just invented. And uh, so actually, we had decided to do it before the browser existed, but then we rolled out, the browser was there, and the rest is history. In 1999, the company changed its name to Ensight to reflect its expanded coverage area and services. The concept that, that uh, we've always used is to take what we have today and build on it for tomorrow. We learned a lot of lessons in the process, but that's one of the advantages of being an innovator. You find out how to do it right. We don't have to be. As a matter of fact, I don't want us to be the first ones out there. We're just too small to be the first ones, but we always have to be a quick follower, and we always have to make sure our customers know that, in fact, we're doing that for them. So we always have to be constantly looking to the next thing, the next thing, and the next thing. And we also have to constantly, constantly reinvent ourselves and reinvent our companies. And I think we've done a good job of that in the past, and, and we'll continue to do that in the future. I've been a director since 1956, and I've been amazed at uh, what has happened in, in, in all those years, uh, the progress of the company, and especially the, the employees, the uh, expertise and the uh, quality of the people that they keep adding every every year it's it's just amazing what mom and dad uh, shared and what Robert and Anna had done and our grandparents before as you said the important thing that we have is integrity to our community this is the people are the people that we live with these are our neighbors these are our friends these are the people that we have a job of service and service has always been a key element in what we have uh, as a family. We're fortunate to have the people we do, pretty unique individuals, and the dedication is really, really strong, and they're all about let's serve the customer and take care of the customer first, and everything else follows if you take care of the customer right. In fact, Ensight was honored with the 2009 Ethics in Business Award a tribute to the timeless values that were established all those years ago. This award really goes to the culture of a company and ethics really is all about uh, in my mind doing the right thing and the fact that we won the award is uh, to me is a compliment to every employee that works for Insight. It's the small things we do every day that makes this company special. It's those little things that allow the regional carrier to successfully compete against industry giants. We just don't like to lose a customer. We want to do everything we can to hold on to that customer. And we treat our customers with respect. And I think that's one of the enduring things that we have that we've kept through the, the hundred years of our existence. And one of the main reasons why we're going to be in business for a long time to come.